Loads of you have got in touch and asked the question, where should I focus in order to get nice, bitingly sharp pictures? Great question. Focusing isn't the only thing you need to think about, though, in order to get sharp images. You have to work with your depth of field as well. The focus and the depth of field kind of dance together. Depth of field is how much front to back in your picture is sharp, and focus is where you put the point of focus. Now, some pictures will have a subject within the image, and it's really obvious what that subject is, such as with a portrait. With other pictures, you may have the whole image is the subject, as with a landscape. What you have to do is to choose the aperture and point of focus that's appropriate to whatever it is you're shooting. So I've come to join Lorna in her portrait. Hello, Lorna. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're right in each other's personal space here, but there you go. Now, with a person, you always look them in the eye. So the place to focus is smack bang right there in the middle of the eye. We're shooting this with a longish lens. Now, a long lens has an inherently shallow depth of field. If you use a wide aperture, it will really make that depth of field very, very shallow. That is the amount of front to back that's sharp. Now, with a portrait, you want to concentrate on Lorna here. So the background, what's going on over there, all soft and fuzzy, that's perfect. When you go to focus, put your little gun sight using the area mode, choose where you're going to put the gun sight, compose the shot, look where Lorna's eye is and put your gun sight in that place in the viewfinder. Press the button to get the focus and then shoot it. Compose, focus, shoot, because if you focus it and then hold it, waiting for the shot to get better or you move around, the chances are you'll move yourself a bit and your shot will be out of focus and there's nothing worse than a portrait shot with blurry eyes. With a shot like this, where we've got Lawrence, the moody skateboarder, let's say this is a portrait, okay? That makes Lawrence the subject of the shot. We're still using a long lens, we're still using a wide aperture, which is giving us a shallow depth of field. So the point of contact in the picture is Lawrence. You want to focus on his eyes. The skateboard's soft, we want a skateboard there because we want to say he's a skateboarder, but it's Lawrence we want the subject of the picture to be. Suppose a different scenario for a moment. Let's say this is a shot for the skateboard manufacturer. They're more interested in their skateboard than in Lawrence, but they still want Lawrence in the shot. So the subject has changed from Lawrence to the skateboard. So all you have to do is focus here on the skateboard. Now the skateboard is nice and bright and sharp and Lawrence is a little bit soft in the background, but he's still there. He's still discernible. There is, of course, a third option with this. Let's say you want to get the skateboard nice and sharp and Lawrence nice and sharp. Now we're moving into the realm of depth of field big time. The way you're going to do that is to go from a big wide aperture like f2.8 or f5.6. We're going to shove that down to about f16 or f22. Now, when you do that, the picture will go really, really dark because the hole in your lens has got tiny. What you have to do to compensate is to make your shutter speed last longer. You need a slower shutter speed to let that light burn onto the chip. So as Janie changes the aperture, the shot's gone really, really dark. She's now doing the equivalent of extending the exposure time using a slower shutter speed to bring the light back in and get the shot. Now you should have a nice sharp skateboard and a nice sharp Lawrence. In fact, you can even see the blades of grass in the foreground a bit better, which Janie's shooting for through just to sort of give it a bit of atmosphere. There is, of course, one last scenario with this, and that's a really wide angle lens. Now we've got the same shot in the same location, despite the fact it looks completely different. Lawrence looks further away and the skateboard looks closer and we can see sheds that weren't there before. That's because the wide lens is wide. It's sucking in more stuff from around the scene. Also, everything is front to back sharp. Wide angle lenses or short lenses, as they're also known, have an inherently massive depth of field. Everything from the skateboard to me to Lawrence and off to the horizon is sharp, despite the fact we're using quite a widish aperture of f5.6. Because of this massive depth of field, it's far less critical where you focus if you're using a very wide angle lens. So long as you're sort of somewhere between the skateboard and Lawrence, they'll, they'll both be sharp. 